Okay, so we're going to look at a really interesting way of approximating logarithms to the base 10 using this simple looking function. So if you were to put in a value of x, let's say x is a half for example, and this would be a really good approximation, it'd have a around 2% error. And if we were to put in x is 3 as well, for example, we would get a less than 4% error. But then if we were to try and put in a large number into this approximation, the approximation would actually be really bad. So we'll just explore, there's an extra little step that we need to apply if we're working with a large number or a very small number, which we'll look at before exploring where this function has actually come from. So let's say we have a large number, let's say we've got 5,772. So we could actually write this number in scientific notation or in standard form as 5.772 times 10 to the power of 3. And then if we were to take logarithms of this number, we can apply our laws of logarithms to the left hand side here to split this up into a sum. So we've got log 5.772 plus log to the base 10 of 10 to the power of 3. And this number here, log to 10 to the 3, is just equal to 3. So we can write all of this then as just being 3 plus log 5.772. So even though our approximation is not very good for x equals 5772, it might be a bit better for 5.772 just using this property of laws of logarithms here. And similarly, if we're working with a small number, let's say we're interested in log 0 0.002718, for example, we can rewrite this. This is like having 2.718 times 10 to the negative 3. So we can rewrite this as negative 3 plus log of 2.718. So we only really need our approximation to be good for values of x between 1 and 10. So you can see here, by turning this into standard form, we're only really interested in the logarithm of a number between 1 and 10 then we just add or subtract some constant there. And actually we'll see that this approximation is built on something which is very good for x roughly equal to 1. So at the moment we're only really working with x between 1 and 10, so this is going to give us a really good approximation when x is roughly equal to 1, but unfortunately it's not going to be as good an approximation when x gets bigger towards 10. But we can tweak this actually to take advantage of the fact that this approximation is going to be good for x nearer to 1. So you can think of this as, instead of being between 1 and 10, x is between 10 to the power of 0 and 10 to the power of 1. But there's nothing stopping us, instead of using scientific notation where we have a number between 1 and 10, we could change this to go, for example, between 10 to the negative half and 10 to the positive half, so between 1 over root 10 and root 10. To take advantage then, all of our x's would be closer to 1, taking advantage of the fact that this approximation is good for x near to 1. And actually 1 over root 10 is approximately 0 0.3 and root 10 is approximately 3, so we can instead, just to make this a bit nicer to work with by hand, we'll impose now that we need to make our number, instead of just between 1 and 10, like we would for scientific notation, we're going to choose our number instead between 0 0.3 and 3. So with this added step now, let's see how this changes our approximations from earlier. So log 5772, we're going to write this as log 0 0.5772 times 10 to the power of 4 now. So we've changed this because 5.702 is bigger than 3. So then we can write this as 4 plus log of this number. So we can write 4 plus log of 0 0.5772 and then use our approximation here. So plus 0 0.92 times 0 0.5772 minus 1 over 0 0.5772 plus 1, just to show exactly how this approximation would work for a large number. And similarly for our small number, if we've got log of 0 0.002718, here our 2.718 is actually already between 0 0.3 and 3, so we don't need to change anything there, so we just have negative 3 plus 0 0.92 times, and now we've got x is going to be 2.718, so we've got 2.718 minus 1 over 2.718 plus 1, just to show how our approximation works then for small and large numbers. So now we'll look at where exactly did this approximation function come from. And it turns out it's actually related to a less well-known series expansion for the natural logarithm function. So you may well know the series expansion for ln of 
1 plus t. This is given by t minus a half times t squared plus a third t cubed and so on like this. And this is good for t roughly equal to 0. But then we can take this and instead of having t we can substitute in negative t to get a slightly different looking expansion. ln 1 minus t is negative t, take away a half t squared, then we get a negative from the t cubed term and so on. Again, this is good for t roughly equal to zero. But now something really interesting happens if we take this first series expansion, subtract the second one. So we're going to have, let's write this out as ln 1 plus t minus ln 1 minus t. So we get t take away negative t, so we've got 2t. But then these two terms, when we subtract, just cancel with each other. Then these next two terms, we get 2 thirds t cubed. So we'll write this as a plus a third t cubed, it's being multiplied by the 2 there, and similarly the powers of 4 would cancel and the powers of 5 would just double. So this gives us another series expansion, and we can also write this using the laws of logarithms. If you subtract ln of something from ln something else, we can write this as a division, so ln 1 plus t over 1 minus t is now given by this series expansion 2 times t plus a third t cubed plus a fifth t to the five and so on. And this is again good for t roughly equal to zero. So now we can write this one plus t over one minus t. We could change this to become x. So if we introduce a new variable x is one plus t over one minus t. After a bit of rearranging and making t the subject we get that t is equal to x minus one over x plus one. You can just check that if you like. So then we can rewrite this, ln 1 plus t over 1 minus t is just ln x. So then we've got ln x is given by 2 times, and then instead of t we've got this x minus 1 over x plus 1. So x minus 1 over x plus 1, and then plus a third times this t cubed, so a third x minus 1 over x plus 1 all cubed, and so on. So this is good for values of t roughly equal to 0, but x is 1 plus t over 1 minus t, so when t is roughly 0, x is actually roughly equal to 1. So this is why earlier we were interested in values of x near 1 for our approximation. So now we can actually compare this series expansion with the standard Taylor series expansion about x equals 1. So this would be like taking, instead of having 1 plus t here, we just have x. So if we want the Taylor series of ln x near x equals 1, it's the same as just replacing 1 plus t by x here. So if x is 1 plus t, then t is x minus 1. So we get the same expansion just with x minus 1 in place of t. So we have x minus 1 minus a half x minus 1 squared plus a third x minus 1 cubed and so on. And this would again be good for x roughly equal to 1. So if we compare First of all, let's compare the graph of the first three terms in our Taylor series expansion against the graph of ln x in this range between 0 0.3 and 3. So you can see here we've got some quite good approximation, but it's not very good for larger values of x closer to 3. But then if we compare this to actually just the first term in our new series expansion, you can see that this gives us actually a much better approximation. And if we were to include this second term as well, going up to the cubic term, you can see we get a really, really good approximation in all of this range between 0 0.3 and 3. So now we've got a decent approximation for ln x, and next we need to look at how we transform this into an approximation for log to the base 10 of x. So the standard way of going from natural logarithm to log to the base 10 would be using the change of base formula. So the change of base formula tells us that if we have log to the base a of b, we can always rewrite this using a different base c as log to the base c of b divided by log to the base c of a. So the implications here then are that if we've got log to the base 10 of x, the thing we're interested in approximating, we can always rewrite this in terms of natural logarithms as ln x over ln 10. So here 10 is a and x is b. So now if we have 1 over ln 10, this number is approximately 0 0.434. So we've essentially got 0 0.434 multiplied by ln x. And now we've got a series expansion for ln x. So if we want a series expansion for log to the base 10 of x, we just need to multiply by 0 0.434 approximately. 
So now we can take our original series expansion, and just multiplying them, we get, and we'll just write this as log x now to mean log to the base 10x. First of all, we've got 2 times 0 0.434 for our first coefficient, gives us around 0 0.868 multiplied by x minus 1 over x plus 1. And then our next term, we've got 2 times a third times 0 0.434 will give us approximately 0 0.289 as our coefficient for x minus 1 over x plus 1 to the power of 3. And we could keep going like this, just keep multiplying all of our coefficients by this number. But you might notice that where earlier we were working with 0 0.92, here we've actually got 0 0.868 in our series expansion. And the reason for this is while 0 0.868 gives us a good approximation when we include the cubic term and the next terms after that, it doesn't necessarily mean this is the best number to use if we're just taking the first term. So we can say that log x is going to be, it should be approximately equal to 0 0.92 times x minus 1 over x plus 1. So you can reach this 0 0.92 just by trying tweaking different values near to 0 0.868. And this number isn't necessarily optimal, it's just a nice rounded number, so you could even improve on this somewhat to get a nice approximation. So this gives an approximation with a less than 6% error, as we'll see in a minute. But then if we were to actually include the next term, we can get an even better approximation. And again, we can tweak the numbers slightly, so we can have 0 0.86 times x minus 1 over x plus 1, and then we could change this number actually just to 0 0.4 times x minus 1 over x plus 1 all cubed, and then this approximation would actually have a less than 1% error, which I think is really impressive considering we've essentially only got two terms in a series expansion there. And now we'll finish by addressing this claim that there's a less than 6% error for all values of x. So this essentially amounts to, for the percentage error, this would be 100 times the modulus of the approximation 0.92 x minus 1 over x plus 1 minus the thing we're trying to approximate, log x. And if we divide this by the modulus of log x, this is our percentage error function, and we're interested in this to begin with just for x between 0 0.3 and 3. So now we could try and bound this and using some tools like calculus and some inequalities, but I find the calculations are very long and not particularly elegant to follow. So if we just have a look at a graph of this for x between 0 0.3 and 3, you're perhaps convinced there that this always stays below 6% in this region at least. So then what about other values of x if we go above 3 or below 0 0.3? So let's have a look at an example. Let's just say we were working with x's 628 as an example. So remember 628, we would turn this into 0 0.628 times 10 to the power of 3. So then our percentage error here, we'd have 100 times our approximation, we would add 3, so we've got 3 plus 0 0.92 times 0 0.628 minus 1 over 0 0.628 plus 1, and then we just minus, it would be the log of 628, but we can actually write this in the next step as 3 plus the logarithm of 0 0.628. So we'll be able to compare this percentage error for 628 to the percentage error for 0 0.628. So we need to divide also by the logarithm of 628, its modulus. So then we can rewrite all of this as just 100 times, on the top we've got 3 plus 0 0.92 times 0 0.628 minus 1 over 0.628 plus 1, and then take away we've got 3 plus log 0 0.628. So you can see here we've got 3 and then minus 3, so these two cancel, and this is starting to look a lot more like the percentage error for 0 0.628, but we've still got the modulus of log 628 here. But then we can take advantage of the fact that the modulus of log 628 is actually bigger than the modulus of log 0 0.628, because you can think of 628 as being a bigger power of 10 than 0 0.628 is. So then if we're dividing by a bigger number, we'll get a smaller answer if we divide instead by a smaller number. So then this is going to be less than 100 times 0 0.92 times 0 0.628 
minus 1 over 0 0.628 plus 1 minus log 0 0.628. And then we can just divide instead by the modulus of logarithm of 0 0.628. Then you can see this is actually the percentage error we would have if x was 0 0.628 instead of 628. So we know then that this is if we know that this works between 0 0.3 and 3, then we can put in a larger value and then we'll actually get a smaller percentage error. This will be less than the percentage error for 0 0.628, which we know is less than 6%. And similarly, if we had a very small number, let's say we had 0 0.00628, then still the modulus of the logarithm of this, so the modulus of logarithm of this, would still be bigger than the modulus of logarithm of 0 0.628. So this would also, this trick would work for very small numbers as well, because we're dividing by a bigger number. You can think of this as being a larger negative power of 10 than 0 0.628 is. The only issue here is we do have some problems, like for example, the modulus of log 3.14. We would want this to be bigger than the modulus of log 0 0.314, but actually this is the other way round, and this is effectively a consequence of the fact that we chose earlier to have x between 0.3 and 3, rather than between 1 over root 10 and root 10. So there's actually still some values of x we'd need to consider separately. So we need to consider x between 3, and it would be 3 and a third, or 3.3 recurring, if you want to do the extra calculations there. So you could prove that the percentage error for these values of x would still be less than 6%, and then we would be done as long as you're happy with this initial percentage error being less than 6% between 0.3 and 3. So I appreciate we haven't gone through all of that really rigorously at the end, but hopefully you can get a nice intuitive feel now for why the fact that we have a good approximation for x between 0.3 and 3, and just adding this extra little step of converting our number to always be between 0.3 and 3, this does mean that we can use this approximation then to get a good approximation for log x for any positive value of x then.